Trojans matchup. Thunderbird Trojans versus Hoodwinktown Freddies. The biggest game of the K-Max season goes down tonight inside Fredericktown High School, where the one-loss Freddies will look to avenge their only defeat of the season against the reigning, defending Kings of the Conference, still undefeated in league play and trying to close out a second straight K-Max title. It's the Centerburg Trojans taking center stage against their Cross County rivals, streaming live and free on your smartphone, TV, or PC. And it's all coming your way. Next. Knox is the third place I have delivered. And hands down, it has been the best. We're thankful that we received excellent care so close to home. Knox Community Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state-of-the-art birthing suite. It was empowering and I couldn't think of a better place to bring Parker into the world. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. Conference matchups just don't get any bigger than what we have on the menu for you kids tonight. The top two teams in the K-Max square off to decide a league champion. Centerburg and Fredericktown are laced up and ready for round ball. Round two making its way to your eyeballs right here and now. Good evening, folks, and welcome to Fredericktown High School. My name is Brian Skorowski. I'm going to be with you every step of the way tonight for this Friday night K-Max action. And Boy, what a huge opportunity at stake in this one for the visiting Trojans. They can cement their place in K-Mac history with a win. Their second one of the season over the 18-1 Freddy. So obviously this is as big as it gets for Coach John Marhefka and his bunch on the road tonight. And while he didn't downplay how big tonight's contest is, he didn't also rev up his guys' engines too much either. Let's take a look at my interview with Coach from just a few minutes ago well you know since the beginning of this year they've talked about it the boys are when you're cross county rivals like this the boys are very aware so i don't think we should run and hide from it um, but i do want to keep the boys loose and one of the last things i wrote up on the board is have fun you're it's a great opportunity two good teams going at it on friday night high school basketball this should be great uh, it was a really close game but you were able to head out on top in the previous meeting what did you learn from that first matchup with them well, I think we learned that they have some shooters out there, and uh, so we're going to have to shore up our perimeter defense, and hopefully we can bring the energy and make sure we're blocking out and rebounding. But uh, I think, you know, both teams respect each other, and they look at this as going to be a good competition. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. So as Coach Marhefka stated there, you know, there's lots to unpack from that first meeting. So what does Coach Derek Dibbling extract from the 62-58 loss at Centerburg? I asked him that exact question just a few moments ago. Let's see what Coach 
had to say. Frederick Town coach Derek Dibbling is with me now, uh, just ahead of the rematch with Center Bergen. Such a great game the first time. It was very exciting. What would you say was a big takeaway that you were able to unravel from that one and maybe can use to your advantage tonight? Well, I mean, we, we played a really good game. Like you alluded to, it was a really good high school basketball game. I think uh, it just makes even every possession even more you know valuable every time we touch the ball you just got to be more efficient i think it's the biggest thing you're not going to beat a good team not being efficient and games like this are what you live for if you're playing high school athletics so much at stake here tonight the conference championship wanting to knock off your rival how much do you play it up for your kids or do they even need that extra added motivation uh, kids kids pretty motivated i i don't know that we need to hype it up anymore i mean we've, we've had a one game approach all, all all along all year and you know this game is different but it really is no different in terms of our preparation and taking things one, th one day at a time all right coach good luck to you tonight thank you Freddies have now run off four consecutive wins since that loss to the Berg on the road. And each dub has been by at least 19 points. Trojans, on the other hand, they've ran off three in a row in league play since their key win to get into this position tonight. So they'll need one more win over their rivals to lock up that K-Mac title. But first, we'll honor America with the playing of our national anthem, Star Spangled Banner. Big shout out to the Fredericktown Pep Band for bringing the heat in here tonight. Haven't seen a ton of live band action at the high school level throughout this season. So pretty awesome that we have the full gamut on display here tonight. And what a heck of an environment that we do have here at Fredericktown. And let's go ahead and check out my keys to victory for the Freddies here in this one. Let's dive in to Skis Keys. And for me, offensively, let me go ahead and pull down my scoreboard so you can read them all. I think they need to push the rock. They have the better perimeter players, in my opinion. Some quick, athletic dudes on the outside that also need to take open threes. When they get good looks, don't hesitate. Just know that you're going to knock them down. Be confident. Step into them and try to drill them from outside. And then you use the drive and dish game to try and create those open triples. At the defensive end, I think you just got to double Carter Jones when you can. Try to take the ball out of his hands. Make them shoot threes on the perimeters and then get into the passing lanes. Don't let anything be easy tonight for Centerberg. Take a look at my keys on the other side here in just a moment as the starting lineups being named here for the Berg. And there is Carter Brooks, the all-world, all-Ohioan, averaging a double-double this season. Has about half of the team's rebounds, and he is definitely going to be part of the team's keys to success tonight. And for me, I feel like the Trojans just got to play at their pace. Slow it down sometimes. You don't always have to get up and down the floor. You got to feed your big guns, though. That means Carter Jones, who definitely owns the paint. He is the dude in the lane that can get it done on both sides. And you got to defend the perimeter. So many guys for Fredericktown can shoot the three well. That you got to contest them all. And then if you do force a miss, you got to hold them to a one and done. Collect those defensive rebounds when you have the opportunity. Let's go ahead and meet the starting lineups now for both teams who are being announced. 
And there they are, and he talks about Jones. He's averaging about 16 points per game. Double-digit rebounds as well. Levi Houck, very skilled outside shooter. Mick Mead pushes the pace for them. Griffith, another guy that can stretch the floor. And then Alex Johnson rounds out their starting five. On the flip side, four players average in double-figure scoring for Fredericktown. Lincoln Cunningham, Cade Carpenter, Caleb Sheriff, and Ty Hatfield all fill it up in double-figure range. So any of those guys you look to to make some big contributions on the offensive end. Boy, what a game we have in store for you folks here tonight. And we are just a few seconds away from tip-off here inside of Centerburg High School, or Fredericktown High School, excuse me, for the rematch between these two. What a game we saw in the first meeting as well. Came down to the wire, a four-point victory for the Trojans. Can they get it done on the road here tonight? Buckle up, because we're about to find out in the fast lane together right here now, folks. And opening tip is going to be won by the Freddies. So it's the home team with The Rock to open things up. Here is Hatfield, one of the leading assist men in all of the area. Almost five per contest, gives it up. And how about the drive and the kiss off the glass for two. Caleb Sheriff with the first points of the night. First offensive possession now for Centerberg. Clean look inside, but look at everybody fill into the lane for the Freddies, making sure that there were no easy shots. Now Mead thought about one. They bring Jones off the down screen. Nothing there, so they keep it here on the near side. Here's Mead back up top to Griffith. They swing it around, looking to feed it inside to Jones. Triple teamed, and then Hatfield pokes it away at the last moment. About 30 seconds worth of clock coming off here on that opening possession for the Trojans. And now Mead on Corks one and finds the bottom. Mick Mead from downtown and a huge three ball to jumpstart Centerberg here on the road. Freddie's back the other way. Quick trigger and that one's going to go through as well. Caleb Sheriff. Back to back buckets for him. Excellent offensive start. About 90 seconds in, both teams have tasted that downtown living. Three balls popping off on each edge. As Mead turns the corner, sets up Jones. He fires that one just a bit short, and Hatfield rips down the board. Freddie's pushing it back the other way. Sheriff out of control, but it's going to be a blocking foul. First foul of the night against either side, and it's going to go against Downton Hall. So Freddie's kick it up top. Caputo back into the hands of Hatfield. Brings it far side now. Now Cunningham had to pick up his dribble. Sheriff staying aggressive, Hatfield. Dashes his way into the lane, it's spun out. Offensive board secured by Carpenter. So an extra look, and it's gonna be a three point turnaround. Lincoln Cunningham with his first points of the night. Huge bucket right there to make it a five point advantage. Centerberg can't answer. Jones though, doing some glass work. He's got the offensive rebound. And evidently got pushed. Foul's going to go against Cunningham. It's Coach Dibbling. Watching his team almost come away with a huge steal. That was Caputo. Ball must have hit on the end line, though, so Centerberg do it all over again. Here's Jones, baseline drive. Somehow it would not spin its way all the way through the net. Good look there by Jones. 
Now the Freddies, opportunity to extend their lead as they set it up. And the three off target there for Hatfield. Here's Meade off the screen from Jones. Griffith gets it down on the block. Jones immediately turns, kicks it out. Meade, three ball, bottoms up. Nothing but net for McMead. Just about at the midway point already here, this fast-moving first quarter. Freddy's with a two-point cushion. They've got the rock, chance to add to it right here. Hatfield turns the corner, spins, puts it up, and some contact. He's going to head to the free throw line with a chance for two. Ty Hatfield averages about a dozen points per game. Makes good on the first. So Hatfield into the scoring column for the first time this evening. And it'll go two for two. Off the hesitation, Austin Rock, or excuse me, that was Dalton Hall who lost the ball. Freddie swing it. Hatfield now assessing, looking for some options. Now Cunningham down the lane, strong move, too hard off the glass. And it's going to be boarded by Alex Johnson. Johnson now has to pick up his dribble. Trojans working around the perimeter. Johnson off the bounce, got bumped, and he's going to head to the free throw line and one opportunity or no. It's going to be an offensive foul. Let's take another look. Or traveling violation is what's going to end up being a turnover there for the Trojans. Griffith trying to explain to the official that that first went off of the Fredericktown player's shoe. He's not buying it, so it's going to be Freddie's ball inbounding. Kick out to the corner, Sheriff patrolling from outside. So the forecast continues to call for rain from downtown. Here in this first quarter for the Freddies, lighting it up from the land of three. Trojans have knocked down one, couldn't match it there. The three opportunity of their own. Ball movement goes side to side. Now Cunningham out of the corner. They come back up top to Sheriff. Clearing things out. Off the screen, Jones has to switch to Sheriff. And that one's front iron off the offering from Cunningham from long range. Hauk left hand and pass. Griffith head fake. Now the kick out to Jones. He's cut off off the drive. And we're down under two minutes to go as Griffith curls down the lane and lost the handle. Stripped away by Hatfield. Tipped up, but it's able to find the hands of Cunningham. And now here's one. Uncorked and unloaded through the bottom. Cade Carpenter continues the three party. And pretty much everybody on the Fredericktown roster was invited. See if the Trojans got the memo, yes they do! Isaiah Reynolds! 
matches that one. And boy, did the Trojans need that triple right there. As it pulls them back within seven. Look like it might get out of hand here in this first quarter. And for Centerberg to have to dig their way out of a deep hole throughout. But that triple calming things down just a bit here. But the Freddies don't look like they have any thoughts in mind about slowing down on the offensive end. Sheriff never shy about taking any type of shot. Off target though with that one and Reynolds pulls down the board. It's thrown away. Griffith couldn't handle it. And Caputo was there to make it difficult getting the ball back for the Freddies. Got just over 40 ticks remaining. See how patient or how aggressive they elect to be here. Looks like maybe trying to wind a little clock. Play for the final shot if they can get it here. That is exactly what they are orchestrating. Never mind. How about that deep three? It's off target though. Jones with the board. Four seconds to go. Turned it over. And at the horn, Caputo puts it up off the top of the glass. That's going to take us to the end of one in the Fredericktown. Freddy's on top, 16-9. Knox Community Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state-of-the-art birthing suite. It was empowering, and I couldn't think of a better place to bring Parker into the world. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. <laughs> No paywalls, just live sports, exclusively on the OH Report. Second quarter action just about set to begin here at the home of the Freddies where they were getting it done from the perimeter during that first quarter of action, going four of seven from three-point range, according to our statistician, Austin Michael. Three of six triple attempts landed in the place where they wanted them to for the Trojans as well. So, I mean, a lot of damage being done from the outside. Very little being accomplished in the paint right now. And Sinderberg's gonna go to the free throw line. Sheriff picking up the personal. It's going to send Levi Howe to the line. It was our player of the game just the other night. Had a nice contest and a win over Highland at home. To set up Centerburg here on the road with an opportunity to close out their second straight league championship. But they have got their hands full here early. Freddy's break the pressure. Jones matched up now with Hatfield. Now he switches off. Locked up with Carpenter. It's going to be thrown away. Intercepted by Jack Gregory. Sets up a three. Hauk. Two strong back iron. Long board goes to Caputo. He hands off Hatfield. Gives it up to Sheriff being hounded by Hauk. Now they're going to set up Hatfield down on the block. Backs his way in on Meade. Draws some help from Reynolds. Forced to give it up. And now Sheriff through the lane. Hands off. And that one 
Hits its mark as well. Caputo with another three-pointer, the fifth so far in this game for the Freddies. Jones matches back at the other end. The All Ohioans splish splash from downtown. Sheriff wasting no time though, getting two of those right back as he darts his way down to the other end. And that kid's already in double figures. 10 points now for Caleb Sheriff. As we've got a football score up on the board, 21-14. And a turnover, taken away, pushing the pace, Caputo. Spinning and whirling in the lane, tough shot. Ends up in the hand of Reynolds with the rebounds. Now here comes Meade to the corner. Great look inside, too easy for Jones. Jones with back-to-back -back buckets now for the Berg. He's got five. And it's just a five-point game. Freddie slowing down the pace just a bit here. Reese Cassetto with the pass now. Kicked back out. Now Hatfield with Jones on him. Thought better of trying to take him off the bounce. Now Hatfield with the fake spins. Pretty move and he gets it to drop. Excellent. Offense right there by Ty Hatfield. And with Carter Jones, the all Ohioan draped all over him. Sheriff gives up his body. Somehow it pops straight up into the hands of Gregory. Leads to this. Three ball off the mark from Reynolds. And now Hatfield, three on three. Caputo, contact as he went to the rim. And he will go to the free throw line. Take another look, great pass ahead. And just flying into the lane. No regard for his own body there. Puts Thomas on the line. First one, 360s its way around the rim. And then drops home. Back out to an eight-point cushion for the Freddies on our Knox Community Hospital scoreboard. Big shout-out to them. Sponsoring all the goodies here tonight. And it's two for two as we've got substitutions. It's going to be Caputo actually checking out. Yeah, Centerberg now trailing by nine. See if they can find a spark here at the offensive end. They cannot. Sheriff with the push ahead. Hatfield had it stripped away. Great recovery to get back and make the defensive play by Reynolds. So here's Hatfield to inbound, gets it up top. Sheriff from straight away. This man running and gunning from all over tonight. And it's the biggest lead of the evening now for Fredericktown. Halfway through the second quarter. And they turn it over again to the Trojans. Carpenter with the tip to himself. The fake and the bucket at the rim. Cade Carpenter now with five points. And it's danger mode here for the Centerburg Trojans. And you just feel that pendulum swing and all the momentum right now in favor of the home team. And you can sense it. This crowd is with them, folks. They want a big victory here tonight. Dub for Fredericktown ties them atop the standings with the Trojans who got a three ball on the way. No soft touch that time. Shooter roll not available for Jones. And he's going to be called for the foul. As Carpenter going to the free throw line. Cunningham got it to him.
Jones probably wisely just whacked him. Didn't want him to get an easy two points. <laughs> Fredericktown looking sharp so far from the line. Five for five to start the contest. And there's the old announcer's jinx as they miss for the first time tonight. Nice look inside. Too strong is Jones. Can't let him get that much penetration. Sheriff turns the corner. They swing it. Three straight passes. And Jones got a piece of that one. He's ahead of the pack. Carter Jones behind the defense. Great up fake. And now it's back-to-back -back buckets for number zero. As the deficit back down to 11. Jones trying to will his team back into it. Long rebound, though, into the hands of Cunningham. His second opportunity, too strong as well. Now Meade to Houck. Try to fast three ball. One and done for Centerberg. Cunningham lost the handle. It's going to be out of bounds. Nearly a great cut to the hoop for a layup. Said it's going to be Trojans basketball. They've got 2.35 to go here in this second quarter. Last two baskets belong to the Berg. Need a whole lot more, though, if they want to take the lead or get close to it. As Sheriff picked his pocket, flashing the badge there, showing him that he's in charge here in these parts of the country. Nine turnovers now, too, for Centerberg. That is not the recipe for success on the road, especially against a team like the Freddies. 18 wins for him in 19 tries. This kid's been huge all year, of course. Sheriff off target, though, with that one. And then the rebound tipped to Johnson. Johnson being pressured. And now Meade sends it ahead to Hauk. Jones calmly walks it up to the top. Gets it off to Levi. Now the pass over the top, the lob to Jones, and just too much of a man. You got to have two bodies on him. Fredericktown did, and sometimes it still don't matter. Single digits now is the advantage for the Freddies. Looking to add to it, push it ahead, but Jones is there, and he got shoved out of bounds. What a stretch right now for the All-Ohio and Jones. Got half of Centerberg's points. And getting it done at the defensive end, too. The ultimate difference maker in the K-Mac. Certainly could be in line for his second consecutive Player of the Year award. I'm sure Caleb Sheriff... Feels like he also should be in the mix, too. Nice look. Shot blocked inside as Wheeler turned and got met harshly in the lane. Sheriff sends one well short. Jones with another rebound. Now Meade. Sick crossover. Snuck it through. Johnson had to contort his body. Nice defense played by Cassetto in the lane. So a mini cold spell for both offenses right now, and it looks like the Freddies be more than happy to hang on here for the final shot of the frame, already leading by nine, an opportunity to add to it, push it into double figures as we go to the halftime break. Their perimeter ball movement just on another level here tonight. They look sharp. Now Hatfield turns the corner right into the body of Jones, tipped up by Meade. Sheriff got swatted on the perimeter by Hauk. Came back to him, but that's going to take us to the end of two quarters of play. We got a dandy, folks. Fredericktown right now with a 31-22 cushion. 
We'll take a quick time out. We'll be back with some halftime stats. Break down those first two quarters for you. Get you ready for quarter number three. Keep it locked and loaded. Live and free. Boys High School Hoops came action. We'll return in just a moment. Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state of the art birthing suite. It was empowering, and I couldn't think of a better place to bring Parker into the world. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. No paywalls, just live sports, exclusively on the OH Report.
It's halftime here at Fredericktown High School where after two quarters of play, the Freddies find themselves on top 31 to 22. They have been getting it done from long range. And we are gonna now welcome in our star intern, Austin Michael, to break down the first half numbers for me. And obviously, three-point range has been very important for both ends, but it's been the Freddies been a little bit more successful. Definitely, last time I was on the Fredericktown versus Senator game, they barely shot any threes. It was all from the two-point range. And today, they've just been on fire from three. Uh, they're shooting a solid, 43 three-point percent, and whereas Senderberg's shooting 36 percent. And I think another thing that's got to be a factor here, Austin, and we haven't been able to say this much in 2020-2021, but I think that the whole crowd is bringing a little bit of swag and energy to the environment. We're right next to the band, and dude, it's loud here. This is the loudest gym I've been at all year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Fredericktown went on a big run and the crowd just went wild and the band is just being super loud. So for the second half, any adjustments that you see that need to be made by Centerberg to try to get back into this, are you pretty satisfied with what you've seen from them? I've been pretty satisfied so far, but they definitely need to shot, uh, stop number four, Caleb Sheriff. He's already in double digits with 13 points and he has just been a menace from the three-point range. Uh, if they can up their perimeter defense and really uh, slow down their turnovers, since they have nine turnovers, they could definitely come through with the win. Definitely hanging on to the basketball has been an issue for the Berg here in this one. We'll see if they can clean it up a little bit here in the second half. I think that if they can limit themselves to about three, four turnovers, then we're gonna see Center Berg get back into this game, Austin. That's going to do it for our halftime update. We're going to take one more time out. We'll be back. Third quarter action on the way from Frederick Tech. Community Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state-of-the-art birthing suite. It was empowering and I couldn't think of a better place to bring Parker into the world. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. Paywalls, just live sports, exclusively on the OH Report. are just about set for second half action here at Fredericktown High School. What a matchup we have for you folks tonight. Center Burke looking to close out their second consecutive KMAC championship, but on the other side, the Fredericktown Freddies want to try to stay in the mix for the league title by handing Center Burke their first loss in league play this season. I'm Brian Skronsky with you on the call, and 
Appreciate all of you out there watching right now in Facebook and YouTube land and want to give you guys an opportunity to make it onto tonight's broadcast. Go ahead, drop me a comment and let me know where you're watching from, who you're rooting for, and I just might read it over the air as we are ready for third quarter action. So drop me a line. Let me know how you're taking in tonight's live stream. I always love hearing from you, the fans of the OH Report. How about that backdoor cut to open up the second half, but it's even better defense as Cunningham lost it as he went up, and it's going to be a turnover for the Freddies to open up the third. Here comes Meade running the show. Locked up with Thomas Caputo. Centerberg works it here to the near side, looking to get it to Jones down low. Actually, they're going to go cross court. Now Meade cut off, gives it to Jones. How about that move? The acceleration, the quick first step, and Jones knocks down the J. Share from the corner. They're going to lock him down. Double team, fire, fire. He kicks it back up top, though. Hatfield. And now Carpenter, Cunningham rather. And we're going to get a foul, the first foul here of the second half on either side. And it's going to go against Carter Jones, just his first. Throw and come in for the Freddies in front of their own bench. Now Sheriff, such a versatile, gifted offensive player. I love how he's, as a guard, always kind of backing his way in to the lane. Caputo gave it up. Now Cunningham back up top to Cade. Now they swing it to half field. A lot of patience being displayed here by the Freddies at the offensive end. And time obviously on their side with the lead. Though Jones coming over, making that one challenging. And Meade with the rock. To the corner, Jones. No hesitation. Three ball, too strong. Big board by Caputo. Thomas pushing it back the other way. He got all the way to the bucket and then missed it. And now the leak out to Meade. And it's poked away. Coming over to make the play was Hatfield. Meet the trigger, brings it up top. Now here's Meek. Sneaks it in, Jones. Bullies his way in for two more. Carter Jones with the full city on his back here tonight. Flat out, taken over. Got a game high 15. Back down to a five point cushion, but the Sheriff. On his way to the free throw line. Got a chance to add two more. Another look as Caleb clearly creating all that contact with Alex Johnson. Does it so well. Makes the first free throw. Derek Dibbling with a little message there for the referee. As Caleb goes two for two from the line. Pushes the advantage back at the seven for the Freddies. Meade off the screen from Jones. Instantly rolls inside and you saw that the double team was waiting for him in Cunningham. And now Mick unloads a three and he rings the bell from downtown. McMead closing in on double figures. Hatfield got in tight. Had to go up over a couple of defenders. Bothered the shot. So it leads back the other way. Griffith. Hesitation. The floater came up short. And we're going to get a foul on the floor. 
it's going to go against Cade Carpenter. So Centerberg with a chance to get as close as they have been since the opening minutes. As they get Jones down on the block, he's going to go to the free throw line. Jones with that big wide body is just an impossible matchup for one defender. And that's why the Freddies have been rolling over two, sometimes three, to try to slow down number zero. And it's been pretty ineffective as the kids got 16 now and a chance to cut it down to just a two-point game. What a stretch by Carter Jones. This kid's awesome to watch. Such a humble, outstanding presence off the floor too as we get a blocking foul against Downton Hall. Didn't like it. Thought that he beat the offensive player to the spot. But you got to also let them get there too. As Hall's going to check out in favor of Levi Houck. Mead pressuring Hatfield in the backcourt. Now over to the opposite corner. Five wide now for the Freddies. Stepping into a three and misfiring there was Cunningham and it's another rebound for Carter Jones. Just patrolling the lane like an absolute champion tonight. Meade picked up his dribble. Kick out Griffith, had a lot of space. Meade though is the one who's gonna pull the trigger on a three and came up well short. Would have gave Centerberg the lead. Instead, now it's the Freddies with a chance to add to it. Three points right here. Finds their home, Thomas Caputo. Lighting it up from long range. He's got eight. Jones, tough pass. Tipped up out of reach there of Johnson. Or actually, the official says that it wasn't touched. Had one referee say that it was. The other said that it wasn't. But look at Jones watching traffic change there like a safety. He comes up with the interception. What can't this kid do? So Trojan throwing, working to the opposite side, Mead likes to go away from Jones' screen. And he's going to get fouled, head to the free throw line. Looks like Caputo, who's assessed the foul, coming up a little bit lame there. It's actually not going to be a shooting foul. Not sure why that wouldn't be. As we return to action. Shot off target from Mick Mead, and it's one and done, rebounded by the Freddies. They lead it by five. Caputo wide, open look, air milled it. A little too pumped up on that offering. Now here comes Mead, spinning through the lane. Kick out to the corner, off the mark. Couldn't find Griffith. Turnover number 11 for the Trojans, and we've got a timeout on the floor. Freddie's going to talk things over. Just a 30-second timeout. If you're just joining us, folks, Centerberg has trailed in this one by as many as 16. They have clawed their way back into it here in the third. 
Carter Jones, a major reason why, along with Mick Mead, they have combined for 26 of the 31 Trojan points so far here tonight. As I check in now with you folks out in Facebook land, and wow, the comments are starting to roll in. Elaine Leibarger says, thanks for the live coverage. It is our pleasure, Elaine. Always happy to bring it to you live and free here on the OH Report. Brandon White says, got to give props to his cousin Caleb Sheriff, but he went to Centerburg, so he says go Trojans. Sticking it to old cuz right there. Papa Mead watching Mick and the boys from Florida. He says, let's go, Berg. Vicky Rowland watching all the way from Wichita, Kansas. I remember Vicky watching the other night for the Highland Games. So we've got a dedicated viewer all the way out there in the KS Sunflower State, I believe. Watching his nephew Caleb Sheriff from Florida is Jonah Hammond. Weston Melix says, feed Ty. Probably good advice. And then Missy Bailey Michael always tuning in from Shelby, Ohio, cheering on her son Austin, tracking stats and always breaking down the numbers for us at halftime. And then we'll hear again from Austin at the end of the game as he's jotting down another turnover here for the Freddies. Meade electing not to step into a three there. And now Mick, Mick gives it off. Jones off the bounce, draws a double. Now to Hauk. Landon. Down Main Street, but coming over from the weak side was Carpenter. Swap party ensued. And it turns into three points for Cade at the other end. What a segment for Cade Carpenter. Big block. Turns into a huge three. Can Griffith respond? Not this time, but Jones got his back. The Windex man, always polishing the glass. Went in strong, tips up again. And it's going to be out of bounds. Last touched by Thomas Caputo. Berg works it around. They wanted to get Meade off the double screen down. Johnson was rolling to the hoop. That's who Meade wanted to get it to. Instead, it leaves the Sheriff pushing back the other way, but a bit too quick as he missed with that shot. Now Griffith cutting down Main Street. Can't connect at the 10. Back the other way, Cunningham. Now Hatfield delivers on target to Cunningham. Caputo made it from right there a few seconds ago. This time can't do it and it's an and one. Thomas Caputo. It's worthy of another look. Off the air ball, there's Thomas inside doing the dirty work. And he's going to head to the free throw line. Opportunity to cap off a three-point play. And just like that, folks, you blink. And it's a double-digit game. 41-31. As Coach Marhefka talking things over with Johnson there on the sideline. So the advantage remains at 10 here for Fredericktown as we're 30 seconds away from money time, folks. Fourth quarter action is upon us. How will Centerburg close out the third, though? Can they get a big bucket to try to find a little bit of momentum heading into the final frame? They got eight seconds to make it happen. And they're going to get a foul here. Off the baseline drive by Reese Cassetto, or excuse me, Isaiah Reynolds. Fifth team foul on the Freddies, so free throws may become very valuable for the Trojans in the fourth quarter. Griffith inside to Jones. 
He gets it to drop. Big bucket, and that's going to take us to the end of the frame. Fourth quarter action, folks, is on the way. Where else would you rather be than watching live and free game action on a Friday night? Knox is the third place I have delivered. And hands down, it has been the best. We're thankful that we received excellent care so close to home. Knox Community Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state-of-the-art birthing suite. It was empowering and I couldn't think of a better place to bring Parker into the world. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. No paywalls, just live sports, exclusively on the OH Report. Welcome back for a money time here at Fredericktown High School. Everyone's favorite part of the program, the final eight minutes of play is all that remain here in this K-Mac heavyweight showdown. League leading Trojans looking to close out their second straight league championship. The Freddies looking to tie for the top spot in the league, hoping to avenge their only loss of the season up to this point in 19 outings. And they, right now, have got the lead 41-33. After a third quarter that saw the Berg outscore Fredericktown 11-10. And it's going to be a turnover here by the Freddies. I want to give a quick shout-out to Knox Community Hospital making tonight's Broadcast live and free for you folks watching at home. They're always elevating care at Knox Community Hospital. You can visit kch.org to put your health first. And taking care of the ball might be something both these teams want to do first, but wow. Can, can we just watch that one more time? Nice move. Great looking pass, but then popping the pinata out of midair. Carter Jones, no chance on that one. Pull up jumper, a couple of times off the rim, rattles in and out for Cunningham. So Centerberg with a chance to add three to their score, they're gonna do it. Lee, Vi, Hauk from downtown, and it's a big one, timeout taken by the Freddies. What a huge shot buried there by the 6'2 junior. He's made more than 23s on the season. But a huge part of the team's success. Got him back within five now. Tonight's player of the game will also be brought to you by Knox Community Hospital. High quality community health care. And a lot of players in the running right now for that one. Fredericktown got a few candidates. Caleb Sheriff probably would be at the top of my list. And there's no question on the other side. Carter Jones, 19 points. Got to have double-digit rebounds right now, though that is unofficial. He has been a flat-out monster in the paint. And there he is, coming out of the timeout, looking to fuel a big fourth-quarter comeback. That was Hauk who just buried the latest three to make it just a five-point game. See what the Freddies do on this offensive possession. Hatfield being hounded on the perimeter there by Reynolds. Had to give it off. Now it's back to him. Sheriff 
darts in between a couple defenders fouled at the rim. Not sure that I like that call. Let's see it again. Here's Sheriff. Got real skinny in through there, and boy. The foul's going to be against Griffith. Hit him with the body, according to the referee. Caleb can't make him pay on the first. But the second free throw is pure. Back up to a six-point lead. Mead in between the circles. Tosses it over to Hauk. Nearly had his pocket picked there by Caputo. Hauk. He's heating up, folks. Downtown living is the place for Levi tonight. Stretching his point total back up to eight. Back-to-back -back triples for him. One possession game. Friday night game action does not get better than this. What a game. Griffith with the save back in bounds. But it's to the Sheriff. He's got two and a chance to unload for one more. Let's see it again. There he is right up over the top of Meade. In the old-fashioned three-point play for Caleb. Looking to be initiated. Looking to Ty Jones with a game-high 19, but it spins in and out. Carter chases down the rebound. Forty-four, thirty-nine, five and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Jones lines one up, sends one home. Back down to just a two-point game. Big blow delivered on that last possession by Centerberg, but how about the counter punch? Right to the gut. Carpenter delivers it on the money. Griffith down low. Reynolds tied up. Jump ball is the call. As the sheriff came over, got his hands on it. Possession error going to be over to Fredericktown. Austin thinks that it was a travel. Nevertheless, it does give the possession back over to the Freddies. They've got a five-point lead. Coach Dibbling calling in a play. So the Freddies looking to get into a set. Got the high-low going in the lane. Of course, no reason to rush anything. As Hatfield going to force Jones to come out and guard him. And we're going to get a 30-second timeout. It's going to be taken by Fredericktown. Take a quick opportunity. Let's look at Ski's Keys again, shall we, folks? And See how the Freddies have done up to this point. They certainly have been pushing the rock. There's no question about that. Taking open threes has not been a problem. They started super sizzling hot. They've cooled off a bit from downtown, but they're still getting those nice driving kicks defensively. I don't even think a double team matters on Carter Jones at this point. He is going to get what he wants when he wants. 22 points for that kid. So mark that one off the list. Make them make threes. So far, Centerberg has stepped up to the occasion and then get into the passing lanes. Haven't seen him do it much here in the second half, but the Freddies were very successful with that in the first couple of quarters of play. So they're checking about three quarters of the boxes up to this point, and that is why they have got a five-point cushion in the driver's seat here to tie for the top of the KMAC standings. 
47-42 is the advantage right now for the Freddies. They got the rock, and they got it in the hands of Ty Hatfield. And you see they've switched Meade onto him. Jones now going head-to-head -head with Carpenter as this one boarded by Cunningham in the lane. Would it fall? Boy, it sat on the rim for about a second and a half. Leads to Meade, and he's going to get fouled. Mick Meade headed to the free throw line. Three shots on the way. And that's all set up by Mick. Pushing the pace and not being scared to pull up. Have the kahunas to take a big three ball right there in transition. And right now the Berg four for four from the free throw stripe. We'll see if Mick can continue that trend. Second announcer's jink here, here tonight on the free throw line. And Mick misses the first two. Stud Jr. usually so good from the charity stripe. And it's an empty trip. But we're going to get a loose ball foul that's going to go against the Freddies. Coach Dibbling hates the call. And it looks like he has like a bad smell or something around him trying to get rid of it. Can't believe it. Trying to call over an official to explain to him what just happened. He's saying there's no way. Both sides now with six fouls each. So zero fouls to give. And I think we're going to get a timeout. No, it's just going to be a warning. A warning assessed to Coach Dibbling and the Fredericktown bench. Because unfortunately for Derek, just because you have a point doesn't mean that the officials are going to hear you out. Can't change it. And the first front end of the one and one is good there. Levi Hauk makes it a perfect pair. We've got a one possession game. Three and a half minutes to go. Halffield down the lane. Switch hands in midair and the scoop shot is good. Ball loose on the floor, push it ahead. And ahead of the pack was Caputo. He's got two more. Four straight points for the Freddies. Timeout on the floor taken by the Berg. They feel it slipping away. Look at the fire, the energy, the emotion over there on the sideline for the Freddies. Boy, do they want this one bad. They swept center Berg a season ago, losing that first matchup this year. In a bit of a heartbreaking fashion, I would say. The four-point loss when they played so well on the road. Kind of has put a, a lump in their throat that they would love to get rid of. And then over on the other side, what an opportunity for the Trojans to try to dig themselves out of a seven-point hole here in the fourth. Wrap up the K-Mac with a victory here on the road. Can't get a storyline much better than this, folks. And as I dive back into your Facebook comments, I see there's Amanda cheering on Landon Griffith. Big fan there. Charity says, wow, bad calls. Mikey Lee, shout out to all the seniors leaving it on the court. 
And I agree with Weston, you gotta feed that boy Ty. Great advice. We'll see if it holds up. And then McKenzie watching from North Carolina. Cheering on the Freddies and Caleb Sheriff. Well, they've had a lot to cheer about so far. We'll see if they can avoid some crunch time heartbreak. Trojans looking to deliver just that though here on the road. Meade, big shot, came up short though. Loose ball chased down by Cunningham. Down to the home stretch folks, two and a half minutes to go. The fans here can sense it. Cunningham spinning, dishing, Sheriff on Cork's a huge one. Bottoms up. Wow. What a big shot for Caleb Sheriff. He's got 21 now to lead the Freddies. Just total clutch jeans. Griffith, no response, boarded by Hatfield. Ty has to pick it up in the backcourt. Now he's charging, they get it to him. Dishing off, Cunningham. Shot blocked from the backside. Levi Howe came over. See it again. Nice setup. Just better defense by the junior. Going to get a timeout. Nothing available there off the inbounds. But boy, they can feel it here. Home fans, just a buck 41 away from tying for the top of the K-Mac standings. They have been the top two teams in the league all season long, folks. Trojans, of course, the defending league champs. But the Freddies having a phenomenal year. Looking to clinch win number 19. Mammoth defensive possession here for the Trojans. They need stops and they need a bunch of concurrent stops. Meade gambled. Got to, though, at this point. Now Mick comes over. Double team. Loose ball. But we're going to get a bump and a foul. Dalton Hall is going to pick up the personal. You saw how emotional he was. He thought that he might have forced Caputo into a travel. Instead, Thomas on the line as Coach Marhefka looks on. Sees this one getting away from his boys. But the door still remains cracked. Off the miss, here comes Meade. Two-man game with Jones. Stop, pop, won't drop. Loose ball foul. I believe this is gonna go against Landing Griffith. It will. We're headed over to the other end. Second foul on Landon, who's been shut out here tonight. Hasn't been his normal aggressive self at the offensive end. Typically, he is a long-range assassin. Likes to light it up from downtown. Scoreless here tonight. And what an offensive rebound by Sheriff. He's got the stick back. And I think you can all but lock it up here for the Freddies, folks. Doesn't point lead now. They don't leave the window open. No crack in the sill here. Jones looking to flex. Too strong. Hatfield flies up for the board. And we're going to get a foul. It's going to go against Jones. Ninth team foul, so still a one and one situation for Fredericktown. And it's going to be Hatfield. It's going to step up to the line with a chance to basically ice it. Sheriff looks like he's cramping up. 
when you've been as active as that kid has, it takes a lot out of you. Game high 23 points for Caleb Sheriff tonight. Lounging here with a minute to go, just soaking it all in. He knows that he's about to knock off their bitter rival. Get even. Not only atop the standings, but with Centerberg on the season. And it's been a quarter to quarter to quarter Fredericktown compilation of great basketball here. We saw Centerburg make their runs, but the Freddies never flinched. They never allowed the Trojans to overtake them for the lead, even though they got close. They make the big crucial plays when they needed to in this game. It's been a treat to watch as they were so close in that first outing, and then after dropping that game at Centerburg, they have just been ripping and rolling through teams Every single victory since has been by 19 points or more as Sheriff is up. And look at that. Kid does so much. He's even wiping up his own sweat off the floor. The 5'10 senior, just a total, complete performance tonight. I think he's going to be our player of the game, folks. We're going to get an interview lined up with the Sheriff of Fredericktown right at, after the conclusion of tonight's game. And look, even though they got the big lead just a minute ago, Caleb's still stretching out, want to get back in there. Wants to be on the floor to close out the victory. Centerberg never says die, though. And especially number zero. Here's Jones off the attack. Somehow strong enough to fight that one up. Two free throws are in his future. Carter Jones has battled all night. Has more than half of the Trojans' free throws in this contest. And if he knocks down this free throw, we'll have more than half his, of their points as well. Kids got 23 of the 45 Centerberg points. And Caleb Sheriff has checked back in. Jones can't get the friendly roll and it's rare to get it on the road. Travel is the call against Cunningham. Got a bit ahead of himself out there in transition. Tried to steal a couple. Now Meade, racing, kicking, Jones, three, bottoms. And why wouldn't he? Carter Jones trying to make it interesting here down the stretch. But it looks like Hatfield and company are going to close it out. All he's got to do is knock down a couple of free throws. So Ty at the line, two shots. Drills the first. Chance to push it back out to double figures. And he does, buries them both. Meade bumps on the outside, foul is gonna go against Caputo. So you see Mick with a big smile. As he knows, it's kind of a moot point at this point in the contest. And Mick misses. Offensive board by Jones. Got the stick back as well. Trojans take a timeout. But they would need more than just a miracle here, folks. Divine intervention would have to come through here inside of Fredericktown to try to prevent these ladies from cheering on a Victoria squad. 
eight points, a differential of just 15 seconds to go. And I see Christine Lindman says, years of hard work paying off. What a great season for the Freddies. They are far from done. Imagine they got a long road ahead of them in the tournament as well. Tammy Fellows hasn't been a big fan of the referees. Been a bit hit or miss. I'd say they've got more right than they have wrong. And I hear intern Austin, he's explaining to the Centerburg camera girl who was the cousin of Carter Jones about the different scenarios that are available, how they could come back. It all starts with missed free throws and certainly helped that only about a second came off the clock. So exactly 14 ticks are what remain on the game clock as Ty Hatfield heads down to the free throw line where Fredericktown is 10 of 17 tonight. This is the second Jones with the board. Mick hands off. Carter steps into a deep one. That's NBA range off the backboard. Rebounded by the Sheriff. And that's going to do it, folks. The Fredericktown Freddies have tied for the K-Mac lead as they knock off their bitter rival by nine. Big time performance as well by Caleb Sheriff. He's going to be our Knox Community Hospital player of the game for filling it up a game high. 23 points for the junior. Phenomenal stuff here at home. Helping his coach, Darren Dibling, close out a big time victory. We'll probably catch up with him as well. I see he's heading over to Ra Radio Land to talk with them. We'll step away. We'll be back with our player of the game interview. Finish things up with final stats and analysis, folks. So keep it here. Our post game coverage rolls along live and free on the OH Report. Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state-of-the-art birthing suite. It was empowering and I couldn't think of a better place to bring Parker into the world. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. No paywalls, just live sports, exclusively on the OH Report. Stick around, folks, because coming up next is your Player of the Game, presented by Knox Community Hospital. Find out who it's going to be right after this.
what a night of came action we saw here tonight in the home of the Freddies where Fredericktown was able to hold on for a 59-50 victory, knocking off their bitter rival in the Centerburg Trojans. My name is Brian Skaronski. Going to be joined in just a moment. I see Caleb Sheriff is on his way up, our player of the game. But first, let's dive into the final stats. Austin Michael's been tracking them for us all night long. And what do you see here, Austin? What are some of the big numbers that really pop out and let you know why the game finished the way it did? Uh, the big numbers that really pop out to me is Fredericktown shot 48% from three, which is crazy because the first game that I went to for Centerburg versus Fredericktown, they shot maybe three three-pointers the entire game. Uh, they actually boost up their percentage from the first half. They boosted up by 5% for three. And then they stayed about the same for field goal percentage at a 40%. But, yeah, that was the biggest number that stuck out to me. And then, obviously, the turnovers. The Trojans more than 2-1 to one over the Freddies as they had a lot of giveaways here on the road. And it led to some easy buckets for the Freddies. Definitely. They took advantage of those turnovers and got down in transition and really just made them pay. And then the rebounding differential, the Trojans had a few more rebounds, but it was the deep shots going down for the Freddies ultimately that led them to victory. Would you say, Austin? Yeah. Uh, Carter Jones is a monster from the rebound paint area. He is a hard, hard guard for anybody. Appreciate you, Austin, for breaking it all down for us. And we are now going to be joined by our player of the game, none other. than Caleb Sheriff, who is joining me now. Tonight's player of the game brought to you by Knox Community Hospital. And Caleb, just a gutsy performance from top to bottom for you guys. And then you specifically, you showed so much emotion, so much passion. You wanted to get back on the floor there at the end, even though you were cramping up. Yeah. Just tell me about the environment here tonight and what this victory meant to you. The environment was just crazy. It's, it's, when we play Sinnerberg, it's always like nothing we've like, experienced, I guess. It's always just, the you know, crowd is always so loud and explosive. I just love playing in it. And uh, we just really prepared for this game. And I think we came out ready to play tonight, and I think that was a little problem last time we played them. We didn't come out everyone ready to play, and tonight we did that. We really worked hard in practice this week to make sure we could stop Carter a little bit, but even though he had his 28, you know. But we just did our best tonight, and I think it showed. Getting out to the early lead, how much stock do you put in that ultimately leading to you guys hanging on for the victory? Um, I think that's a big part of it tonight, jumping out on them, getting it up by the 10 real quick. I think that kind of took some uh, energy out of them in the beginning, and I just, uh, it was great. So. Games obviously don't get much bigger than this. You tie for the top of the conference lead. You avenge your only loss of the season. How much fun was it to be involved, be on the floor for this contest? It was awesome. It was, it was the best game i played in all year. It's always fun. I look forward to playing Cinderberg every time, and it's just been a blast out here. I love it. So moving forward, after you exercise the Devons of knocking off the Trojans, you're tied now for the top of the KMAC. Obviously, you have some business to prepare for to stay at the top of the league. But what's next for you guys? What are you looking forward to? Uh, right now, we're, our mind's on Mount Gilead. Just getting past them for the league championship. So, I mean, we're just going to get ready for Mount Gilead now. That's our plans. We'll All right. take it one game at a time. Caleb Sheriff, 23 big points tonight. He is our player of the game presented by Knox Community Hospital. Caleb, thank you so much for joining us, bud. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right, that is going to wrap up our coverage here from Fredericktown High School. want to thank each and every one of you out there for watching on YouTube along with our Facebook feed as we had a great game from start to finish, folks, we saw Fredericktown get out to the early advantage, and they really never gave it away as they end up with a 59-50 to victory to tie for the top of the K-Max standings. Want to thank our amazing staff for bringing you tonight's action live and free on the OH Report. 
Austin Michael was tracking stats for us all night long. It wasn't Lindsay, even though she did a great job for us last time when we were over at the Berg. Knox Community Hospital was a fantastic sponsor. Appreciate them for jumping on board to help bring this to you live and free. Zach Fraley was our sideline camera here tonight. Jory Hollenbeck was up top. Also helped build all the commercial and hype trailers that you watched here tonight. So a big shout out to her. My name is Brian Skaronsky. I brought you the play-by-play. -play. Did a little bit of directing as well. So for one last time here from Fredericktown, want to thank you guys for watching. Let you know that we got a ton of swimming coming up tomorrow. We're going to have the Division II sectional championships at Mansfield Senior. So if you like swimming, we are going to have seven consecutive hours of coverage. But for now, for tonight, we out.